about Sheffield Wednesday. I'm Lord Hillsborough and joining me this evening we have Mr Beastie on the line. Hello Mr Beastie. Hello your lordship. How's Hello. it hanging? Oh, oh, low and to the left old boy, low and to the left. How the devil are you? I'm uh, full of the joys of the new football season. Surely good to hear you've got your mojo back have you old boy? It's back fully loaded and raring to go. Ding dong, I say. <laughs> so, without further ado, it's just me and BC uh, just for the moment. So we have got some uh, little bits from Fudge later on. And uh, we haven't had anybody else to join us this evening. Not to worry, I'm sure we'll be able to manage BC. I'm sure we'll be able to manage. So, first things first, we're going to crack straight on. We're rather a bumper episode for the uh, uh, first episode back. Didn't go on rather a long time. We're going to uh, try and keep these down ever so slightly, but uh, uh, we all know what it's like when we're starting out in about the Wednesdays. Uh, so, Oh, right, uh, Derby, Beastie, uh, first actual league game of the season, uh, welcome back to the Championship, and uh, a rather interesting start, uh, I assume you were there old boy? I was there, and I've got to tell you, it, um, the bit that was lacking when we went to Oldham was back with a bang for this, the first game of the Championship, Wednesday, back in the Championship, and it was great going to that game. The sun was shining. The Wednesday were out in four. 6,000 of us travelling down to Derby. And what a day it was. The sun were cracking the flags. And the Wednesday fans were right in the mood for making some noise. And on the pitch, the team really turned it on. Eventually. Turned it on eventually, old boy. Now, uh, I must admit, I was uh, listening away here on the radio. Uh, but, uh, I mean, obviously, Derby, 2-0 up. Uh, I mean, we said the boys turned it on. Uh, how did they look in the first half? Well, fair play to Derby. Um, like us, they'd had a game in midweek. Uh, only they'd come out of it the wrong side of a, a penalty beating. Um, so, at home, on the first day of the season... They're going to want to impress the home fans. So they hit the ground running. Um, and they did play well. Fair play to them. They did play well. Uh, but their goals, their two goals, were, sh- were surely just down to our bad defending as much as it was to their good play. Absolutely. I mean, the first goal, uh, Nathan Tyson, I do believe it was a chap that, uh, that the Wences were looking at um, through, uh, through the uh, off-season as well, um, stood on his own. Uh, Mr Gardner stood watching him, admiring his skills. Uh, I'm yet to be convinced by Mr Gardner, but I don't know if you feel the same. Yeah, it, it's not top of my uh, Christmas listing, Mr Gardner. I'm, I'm, I'm still open-minded about it because I'm, I'm willing to give Dave Jones the benefit of the doubt because... Um, he's done so well so far um, but I, I wasn't impressed with him in this game at all um, and that first goal uh, you can say what you like about the fullbacks not cutting it out and, and they should have stopped the ball coming in but he was there, it was in his spot and that lad was unmarked when he knocked that ball in the back of the net and Nathan Tyson had scored since the mid 90s <laughs> right? all he's been waiting for is Wednesday to turn up Gardner in the middle there you go well, again, you just seem, uh, going back to the original point, I've got plenty of height back there, but uh, maybe just lacking in a little bit of speed. Uh, but we'll come on to, uh, to the replacement later. And again, the second goal, this odd diving, rolling header effort sort of thing that Derby managed to squeeze down there. I mean, why on earth are we letting chaps dive in, header anything in the box when there's three Wednesday players stand around him? Well, look at the size of it. It's Jamie Piggy Ward. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Jamie the Pig. Right? It's no bigger than a garden gnome. How did he manage to beat two 18-foot tall <laughs> centre-halves? To me, that doesn't make sense. And he, right? he, he, rose, he rose like a little piggy salmon <laughs> high above two 18-foot centre-halves. To me, that ain't right. So, BC, uh, of course, uh, Wednesday, uh, start to fight back. It was a slightly just before uh, the half-time. Who pops up? 
Uh, the man of the moment at the moment, Mr O'Grady. Uh, and it can only be said, an absolute corker, Beastie. Absolute corker. Yeah, there were, there were just signs that we were starting to uh, work his way back into it and find his feet a little bit. But nobody in that ground were prepared for a goal of that quality. I mean, it was fed to him perfectly along, along deck. Um, but he's got his back to goal. Now, I love Cog. Uh, but with the greatest will in the world, I never saw him scoring from there. But he turned on a tanner and leathered it. Oh, it was orgasmic. What a goal that was. Well, that, it's going to be goal of the month. Um, without a doubt, that's going to be goal of the month. Absolutely. I mean, uh, he does seem to be fighting for his place. I mean, we've seen him start again uh, on the next match we'll come on to again. Uh, uh, and again, of course, we've got uh, Rodri in there as well now. We'll uh, come on to Rodri a little bit later. But uh, Dave Jones seems to be uh, preferring the chap at the moment. Uh, while they're hot, stick him in. Yeah, you, you can't argue with what Cog uh, did at, um, at Oldham. It, it, it changed the game when he came on. And they were right to start him. It was a great decision by Dave Jones. Um, and to be fair to, to Cog, all through that game, he worked his socks off. It's, it's all he knows how to do. He works hard. He gives you 100% and he never stops. And I did, I did like his little celebration uh, after ah, he scored that goal. Beautiful. He, he strolled casually away from it as if he does it every day. But when he got to the halfway line, he just did the little, yes, with both fish, fists clenched. And it was it nice to see because it obviously, spent, it obviously meant so much to him. Absolutely. Uh, While well, the chaps keep on fighting, uh, jolly good. Uh, and then uh, along came two disallowed goals. Uh, first one, it has to be said, move for the moment, Mr. Buxton. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of a, uh, a little well, bit of spin just, from Mr. Buxton. Just as we'd all uh, recovered from the first orgasmic moment, um, Lewis teased us all up for another one. Um, I think it was O'Grady that put the ball in for him. And yeah. again, he just dances over the top of the ball and then puts it straight into the path of Medine, who unfortunately was just offside. Um, and it, if he times that run better, and it, and it doesn't take much, but if he times that run better, that's a great team goal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, if that's how I don't know if Buxton's trying to make up for the first match, but he didn't play uh, terribly well there against Oldham. Uh, but uh, uh, back to the Medine point, uh, looking a little bit rusty to me. Looking a little bit rusty. Looks like the machine might need a few spare parts there, Beastie. Yeah, it's going to take him a, a couple of three games to get his uh, to get his mojo back. It's taken me that long to get mine back, so it's going to take him a little bit longer. <laughs> absolutely, uh, but it, it will come. Um, we. They're not machines, even though we call them the machine. They aren't machines, these lads. Um, and when they've had a little knock, it does take them time to get the touch back. Um, but it'll come. I'm confident it'll come. Let's just hope he uh, continues to keep his nose clean while it does. Uh, so, into the second disallowed goal, uh, a nice little bring down and a, a nice little shot to, to slide it in there. But uh, the bring down from Medin, uh, used with his hand. <laughs> right, you're talking about touch, right? But there's no way on earth that is a handball. When you think, I think back to some of the handball decisions that have gone for us and against us in the past. There's no way that that can be deemed as handball. It was just good control. Yeah. And the goal should have stood. I'm a little bit iffy, Beastie, a little bit iffy. Uh, it might be the point that Medina is starting to get a little bit frustrated with him just being that uh, half an inch off everything just at the moment. And to me, uh, it, it did look like he brought it down with his hand. But, well... But, I'd just like to point out that I have never, ever been found to be wrong in any of these situations <laughs> in a court of law. <laughs> right, so unless you can prove that, you can have a word with my solicitor. Ding dong. Well, do. No problem at all. But still, uh, Wednesday's carried on fighting, and uh, this is the point where um, uh, Derby seemed to have shut up shop, uh, bringing them... Um, and took made two substitutions, both very defensive, um, and Wednesday just ploughed away and ploughed away and ploughed away, shot after shot, chance after chance. Uh, do you think they shut up a little bit too early, Beastie? Well, I think they shut up shop as soon as they got that second goal. Ah, oh, crazy. Um, we, were, we were on top. That second half, it was just wave after wave of Wednesday attack, and we were absolutely brilliant um, especially down the left with JJ he had their full back in his pocket they were running him ragged um, anything he wanted to do it, the, the full back had no answer to it um, we were just it was just wonderful to watch it really was 
Absolutely, and of course the uh, second goal came from uh, a little JJ run. Again, that little run that he, uh, he does inside. He, he, I mean, he does like to stick out there on the wing, but uh, he does like that run back through the middle. Uh, knocks it to Buxton. Uh, again, Mr Buxton, nice little bit of a cross there. And uh, Medin, again, I know we've uh, saying that he doesn't, he's not been looking too sharp there, but uh, a nice little knockback, very unselfish of him. And who's there, Beastie? Who's there? Well, it's uh, Raider Johnson, isn't it? Raider! When everybody else lets you down, you can always rely on Raider. Ah, In fact, I'm getting those t-shirts made up right now. Rely <laughs> on Raider. <laughs> rely on Raider. Absolutely wonderful. I mean, the chap, uh, it has to be said, his defensive um, uh, prowess hasn't been quite as what it has been. Uh, but again, we are early on the season. But like you've told us all before, Beastie, uh, don't count the chap out because it'll always pop up for us. It will, and to be fair, that goal was no less than we deserved. Um, we absolutely battered them. They can uh, Derby fans can witter on all the like about that first half, right? But in that second half, we did far more damage to them than they did to us in that first half, and we definitely deserved that second goal. And when he scored that, he ran over towards the Wednesday fans and he was patting his badge. He absolutely loves it, does Raider. Oh, he certainly does, all but absolutely. Uh, I mean, as we said, when you when you say about the Derby fans, uh, they did seem to turn rather quickly. And uh, I'm sure it doesn't help. We've got six thousand of the Wednesday massive there screaming away. Must be said, Beastie, the fans there, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Even through the first half when wasn't doing quite as well as maybe what we should have been doing, was singing, dancing, everybody seems to be commenting on the bounce. It has become quite apparent as well that um, in a later match, uh, the Derby fans do seem to have taken the bounce for their own. Well, they could keep their hands off. Um, if they've still stolen our bounce, um, the Oldham fans have stolen the Semedo song uh, and changed it to one of theirs. Um, they're all stealing the stuff off Wednesday, but there's only one Wednesday. Yeah. And, uh, and, that, and if anybody saw that um, celebration by the Wednesday fans at the end of that game, it was first standing. It was absolutely spine tingling. Um, and I can understand Dave Jones has banged on about uh, looking across and seeing everybody bounce. And he had young Rodri with him there, uh, introducing him to the club. And even he's made comments he couldn't believe looking up at that. Uh, and I took a moment uh, to pause from my bouncing, and I looked around. It was just incredible. And the concrete stand itself was moving. <laughs> I'm sure Pride Park is now six inches further south than when we first started. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. It's got to be said, I mean, the Wednesday fans, uh, it was a little bit of shock. We, we are still riding the wave. Um, we, we're following chaps about... Absolutely fantastic. And again, just a last little point there on the Derby game, BC. Uh, we did have the chance to win it. Uh, Mr. O'Grady, uh, Cogs there again. Uh, nice little, must be said, decent save from the keeper. But can you imagine if that had gone in? My word, BC. Oh, no, I can't because <sighs> um, I'd already experienced um, the Wednesday crowd really raising the roof. If that had gone in, oh, it would have gone mental. I mean,. I've done it before, where I've served the Wednesday crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously unintentional. Um, most people call it falling. <laughs> but, um, oh, it would have just been absolutely fantastic. And, um, on reflection, the draw was the right result. But nobody could have argued, really, if we'd have stolen it with that. Um, and especially coming from Cog, because, to me... He was my man of the match. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, at the other end, it must be said, I mean, again, we, we, I've had uh, uh, a few little um, queries about the defence, shall we say, so far. Uh, uh, Mr Kirtland, um, uh, I mean, there doesn't seem to be much that they could have done for those goals, but uh, what was it like on the day, Beast? Did he play all right? He played, it, it played fantastic. Um, it, it carried on where he left off uh, in the Oldham game. He pulled off a couple of uh, saves in the Oldham game that were absolutely key, at key points in the game that kept us in the game and enabled us to win it. It was the same in this. He pulled off a couple of uh, saves in that first half. Uh, one of them where he got down really low and full stretch and tipped it just around the post, which was a, st a stunning save. Um, all the, the fans that were doubting him before the season and uh, worrying about him and thinking we'd, we'd sign some uh, croc, well, I'm telling you now, it, it, it could turn out to be 
through all the the um, lovely hazy stuff that we're seeing at the moment, he could turn out to be the best of the lot. Could not agree more, Beasy. Could not agree more. From what I've seen so far, he's got to be. Um, I'm, I'm going to put, put my neck out and say definitely a signing of the season so far. Absolutely fantastic. People are a little bit worried. He just tend to be a little bit injury prone, but uh, injuries heal, and uh, and I'm sure the chap uh, has learnt how to look after himself. And uh, of course, we all know what his pedigree was, and it uh, looks like still is. So we shall keep an eye. Keep an eye. Uh, right then, chap. So that's it. Uh, shall we call that that for the derby game? Beast. Any more points to make on that? Well, <coughs> I'll just make one more point. Um... We had uh, Reese McCabe made his debut in this game. Oh, uh, of course. And I, and I must admit, um, I was a little bit worried about him, especially coming from a smaller club like Rangers. Never heard of him. Um, it, uh, whenever anybody comes down from the north of the border, you worry about him because you wonder whether they're going to be up to um, a, high, a higher standard, no, which I think make, it is. You did make that point very well last right. week. I, were, I was still worried about him, but I, you don't need to worry about this lad. He may be... Um, Lacking a little bit in height, but he has—he is absolutely full of heart and he is full of skill, and he shies from nothing. I thought it was a smashing debut by the lad, um, and I think he's just going to get better. I mean, of course, it does look like. I mean, obviously, we we did lack Mr. Lines there at the Oldham game. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a battle for that uh, that centre spot between uh, not just Mr. Lines but uh, some Edos in there, obviously as well. Uh, what do you think, Beast? When Mr. Lines fit, are we going to be fighting for places? I think uh, as I'm a big fan of Chris Lines. Absolutely. Um, and normally, I would have said we need Chris Lines in this side every time he is fit, but Reese McCabe has got the spot at the moment, and I can't see Chris Lyons taking it off him unless he has a massive dip in form. Well, uh, again, I mean, could it be possible that uh, we could see Samido stepping aside for Mr Lyons? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think Samido plays uh, he plays a certain role. I think it will be between McCabe or Lyons. He's more, um, more attacking midfielders. Yeah, I do. I definitely do. Right. So, uh, watch this space. Uh, one last point about the derby game, BC, and I apologise. Uh, your lawyers may need to be called. Uh, but uh, your prediction from last week, would you like to rescind? Yes, I think I uh, <laughs> said at the top of my voice, this will definitely be 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> I do believe you may find, BC, uh, that that was uh, Mr Jones of the New York Owls. Uh, Patrick, of course, that did join us last week, and jolly nice it was. Oh, All right, yeah. Uh, I believe I did predict a draw, um, a nil-nil draw. Uh, Mr. Jones did predict uh, a two-all draw. Well done, Mr. Jones. Three points for you. Uh, Beastie, terribly sorry, old boy. Uh, we'll call the lawyers. 3-1, you said. Yeah, but I did say a 3-1 draw. <laughs> so I got it half, right? <laughs> Uh, I can see us starting a table. Uh, right then, so uh, derby game, spot on. Must be, uh, like I say, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, great to be a listener. Great to have the football back properly. And uh, and now we've got something just a little bit special for you. Here we go, Wednesday Weight Watchers, with your countdown top ten to Chubby Heaven. Number ten, Keith Tracy, Big Keith. Tubby Tracy made a big impact last season, but he was clearly carrying timber from his days down the park side. Keith, mate, that shirt was very snug. Time for XL? Oh, I think so. Of course, number nine is David Erst. Big Ersty. Once the Wednesday legend got injured and stopped pounding the hills, those pounds piled on him. Now he's the same height laid down as he is stood up. God bless him. Not half. One fat lady and in at number eight is the midfield blunderbuss Tom Saws. Big Tom. 25 games for Wednesday in a spray-on shirt. He came with a big reputation, a big future, and a very big appetite. Lock up your sarnies. Number seven is Big Stevie Nickel, part of the all-conquering Liverpool side of the 1980s. And he obviously dined out on that fact a lot. Looking at him, though, he dined in a lot, too. Number six is a real blast from the past, blobby boppers. It's Big Steve McKenzie. Fifteen games between 90 and 92, he wobbled his way through the Wednesday midfield, clinging desperately to his 80s pontage. Nice. Are you still with me, Pat fans? Here we go. Here's your top five. And at number five, it's Mark Crossley, Big Norm. The hefty keeper was with us only briefly, but he steamrolled his way into the penalty box to score in injury time. What a bulbous moment that was. Number four is Richie Humphreys, Tubby Humphers. He was a big lad with us all those years ago, and credit to him through hard work and dedication to the pie, he's managed to maintain that same physique throughout his rippling career. Number three is Adam Fatty Proudlock, 
The bubble headed proud Lachlan to party through the night Making him late for training If you're going to do that You need to be good on the pitch He wasn't Number two One little duck With a side order of spring rolls Fried rice and chips It's the big eating Leon Clark Big Leon was a player You either loved or hated There was no middle ground As he probably ate that too And number one Top of the pile It's Kevin Pressman Big Kev The first patchy that Wednesday fans think of And a regular diet of sausage And egg McMuffins Means the lovable man mountain King Kev Still Top of the blobs so oh then, ladies and gents, uh, I do hope you enjoyed that. That's uh, our new feature over oh, uh, here on the uh, on the Wednesday week. Uh, Beasties top ten. Uh, of course, I'm sure you did gather this week. Uh, top ten fatties that plays for the Wednesdays. Uh, Beastie did uh, stick a tweet out there, and uh, lots of people replied. Uh, we were very, very, uh, very, very pleased with the reply we had. Wasn't it, Beastie? Yeah, there were there were very good people, but only too keen to, to make a very very long list of very large footballers that have played for Wednesday, which is a little bit scary, really, because um, initially I thought, oh, we might uh, we might be able to create a, a Wednesday Fat Eleven, um, but by the time I'd finished, I think we had enough uh, room for two uh, reserve teams as well, and of course a fat mascot. <laughs> oh my word! Yes, as we said, Mr. Olsen did put himself forward on there, uh, the party himself. Uh, so, I mean, uh, yes, we did have a, a couple of chaps on there. Uh, Marley underscore Bombarley over there on Twitter. That's at Marley uh, Bombarley over there on Twitter. Uh, Mr. Atherton. Now, I always saw him more square than fat, but it has to be said that the, uh, it was a big unit. Big unit, there, basically. Uh, hey, what, hey, what a big unit. He, what a, he, I would agree with you there, uh, Lord H. He was more cubular. <laughs> Is tubular a word? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, uh, but I had, I had a better list uh, from Sam Roberts on Facebook who uh, sent me a list saying uh, Fatty Clark, Fatty Reek, <laughs> Fatty Miller, Fatty Windass, Fatty Pressman, oh, and Fatty Proudlock. <laughs> now, to me, to me, Sam uh, seems to have some fat issues there. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, again, over there on on uh, on Twitter uh, at a Blackwell, uh, Nigel Jemson. Uh, of course, when he first arrived with his uh, nicely gravid legs and um, uh, always had that nice tan. Uh, again, uh, there he goes. Uh, uh, another. Uh, I don't want to call you. If, if these people are fat beasts, there's no hope for me. Well, I, 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 I've got to go a little bit with Nigel Jemson because I always thought he had lovely perky man boobs. <laughs> um, and I, I remember. Uh, one winter's evening, uh, him running along, and I'm sure he had some lovely cold nipples. <laughs> 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 they were bouncing along in the crisp uh, winter evening. I've gone too far here. Oh, uh, love it, love it. This is like I'm shooting some kind of <laughs> Wednesday fat porn video. <laughs> Starring Nigel Jemson. He came from the mist with oh. frosty man boots. <laughs> I always thought he came from from Nottingham Forest, but not. <laughs> um, uh, so of course we did, we did. We would like to thank everybody that t- that tweeted us. Uh, we've got Alex Gerard on there. Uh, who mentioned a couple of the current players. Um, uh, Mr. Fudge uh, mentioned uh, uh, that uh, he was a little bit worried about some of the uh, the, the, the chubbier players that we seem to have signed. Uh, Joe Matlock, Petnick, and Maguire. Uh, well, Mr. Fudge, and again, like just like Alex, Alex Gerard over there on Twitter, did they make the point? Uh, was it BC carrying a few extra pounds? Is it uh, just? Uh, 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 pre-season munching, or are we? Uh, 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 is this the chaps we're looking at? Again, it, Alex Gerrard needs his bumps felt. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Joe Matic. There's no on him. <laughs> now, okay, um, Pecknick's got about two stone a neck, which <laughs> could shed it very easily. And I'm want to talk because I've got three stone a neck. Um, <laughs> Maguire's carrying a little bit of timber, um, but again, I'm with you. These people are not fat. Like uh, Richard Hoyland picked out Neil Mellor. I've seen Neil Mellor without his shirt. <laughs> right? There is no fat on him. <laughs> this is a, a fit footballer. But I'll tell you what, if you want really bad suggestions... Oh, my well, we, right? a few we had three yeah. absolutely dreadful suggestions. Uh, the, the worst of a lot for me were... Um, all right, it turned into a blade in the end, but... Uh, Del Geary from <laughs> at Good 83 Del Geary, when he played for us, must have been two stone wet through. <laughs> How can that be fat? <laughs> oh, dear. I haven't, I haven't been the same weight as Del Geary since, what, about three? <laughs> 
Ah, yes, I've, I've definitely had thicker visits to the toilet than, uh, than Mr. Geary over there. Uh, over there on Facebook, uh, we had the, uh, the suggestion, uh, Coochie! Coochie Coo! My <laughs> word! <laughs> I mean, I, I, the boy squeaked as he ran away. Was that blown away in the wind? Uh, I, I, again, I apologise, BC. Have we got a name for the, the chat? Yeah. I think it's Daniel Dowd on Daniel Facebook. Daniel Dowd on Facebook, of course. They're mentioning Coochie. Fat. Fat, man. My Daniel, word. mate. If they've got a big chest, that's not fat. <laughs> it's when that big chest has moved down a little bit and they're tightening the belt around it. That's when the fat. Oh. There's no way on earth Coochie were fat. Can you imagine him doing that dive he used to do? <laughs> Right, if he was fat, <laughs> exactly, right, if he'd have been as fat as any of the fat players, and he'd done that, it'd have been like Dan Busters, wouldn't it? It'd have been straight into that cop and through the back of it. Oh, marvellous, absolutely wonderful. Uh, any other bad suggestions there, Beastie? Yeah, we've got at Mali Bombali um, on Twitter, <laughs> suggested Danny Maddox. Danny I, I think, uh, again, he's mistaking being really, really crap for being fat. <laughs> now, now, don't get me wrong, they are very easy to mistake. People make that mistake with me all the time. Um, it, you know, I used to play football quite a lot, um, and now it's either I'm crap or I'm fat. Uh. Absolutely wonderful, loved it. But yes, please, uh, we would like to thank everybody that did get involved. We were uh, very, very, very pleased with the, uh, um, just to uh, knock out a few names out, uh, Mr. Um, Richard, uh, at, sorry, Richard underscore Hoyland over there on Twitter, again, Alex Sherrard over there on Twitter, um, at, at uh, Chris Riston over there on Twitter, um, Desi P79 over there on Twitter, and uh, of course, we, we, we can't mention everybody, but please, we, we will be doing this um, every week so far. It might not be a top ten every week, it might be a cut down to a top five, uh, depending on what we're looking at. Yeah, so uh, please do uh, keep an eye out over there on, on Twitter, uh, on, on the tweeting machine there, for uh, uh, at TWWcast, and, uh, and hopefully uh, send us your suggestions for Beasties Next top ten, or top five, depending depending on how many we get. Uh, BC, thank you very much for that. Absolutely marvellous. So, uh, let's crack on. Next game, BC. Uh, back to Hillsborough. Uh, the season starts in abundance. Uh, Wednesday night's about 25,000. Over 25,000 turned up on a Tuesday night in Sheffield. Uh, not so much of a cold Tuesday night, uh, but uh, belting crowd, BC. First game back, Tuesday night. Happy to be back. Oh, it would be great to be back. And I, I, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy... Um being at home on the first day of the season, uh, three o'clock kickoff. But I do love an evening kickoff, uh, and I knew things weren't going to plan. I knew it was going to be a big crowd when we pulled up. Uh, as, as we approached the ground, it were it was chock a block with the traffic. Um, it was at a standstill, and as we pulled up to the Wednesday night car park, they were putting a barrier across, and we couldn't get in. Ma- it was full. And Absolutely it's lovely marvellous. Well, I've, I've not I've, I've not had that before since the Wednesday car park were open. Um, so that we were late already, so we then to find somewhere else to park up. Um, and by the time we we parked up, we'd missed the kick off. Um, so we got in just as we sat down in the seats. Raider headed the first goal in. Boing! Oh, How's oh, that for oh, timing? Uh, but so, uh, again, back we go. Reader knocking another one in. Uh, cross comes in, Beastie. A bit of a fumble by uh, the Birmingham keeper. Uh, this little chap, 19 years old, top for the top, I do believe. Uh, didn't look too hot with that one, Beast. Well, yeah. I mean, everybody tells me, um, and all the pundits are talking about him being uh, this great keeper. And I, I mean, I've got to be honest with you. Like I said, as soon as we sat down, we were stood up again cheering Raiders' header. And I saw nothing of the um, lead up to the goal. All I saw was I sat down, looked up, and saw him head it in the back of the net. It was and waiting for you, Beastie. And, sorry? It was waiting for you, old boy. <laughs> that's it. Beastie's I mean, here. I can score now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it. That's, and that's how it happened. <laughs> But no, like I say, uh, a goalkeeping error, and uh, uh, that seems to be that. Uh, and again, uh, the first half, Beastie, it did seem more ploughing. I must admit, I was rather worried about this one. I mean, Birmingham. Uh, I've uh, had a jolly good season last season, absolutely. Uh, you'd expect them to uh, to try and carry it on. Whether they're uh, uh, suffering from a bit of the effects of uh, not doing so well towards the end of the season, you don't know. Uh, but uh, Beastie, outplayed, absolutely outplayed them. Oh, and that for staff. I mean, I, I, I've watched lyrical about uh, how good we were against Derby um, and the good football we played in that second half. Well, it continued here. Um, and make no bones about this, we out-footballed 
Birmingham in that first half. Absolutely. Um, and what made it even better was they are not a rubbish side. They, they whatever happens between now and the end of the season, no matter where we finish, they will be up there. They'll be in the top six. I'm absolutely sure of that. Um, even Lee Clark can't uh, ruin a club that much. Oh, don't um, get me started on Lee Clark. We'll come <laughs> to him. But, um, I mean, uh, we, me and my young uh, viewed this totally differently. She always mithers about um, us against Birmingham because we never seem to get out. My team's Derby. I'm either about that. She mithers about Birmingham. But I said to her, listen, this is a Lee Clark Birmingham City. <laughs> and no team that, that Lee Clark puts out will ever strike fear into me. Uh-huh. Uh, and that's how I felt about this. But to be fair to him, they tried and tried, but we out footballed him. Absolutely. I mean, coming back to Lee Clark, we, there is obviously reasons that uh, we, we're not big Lee Clark fans. Uh, he did seem to have somewhat of a fracas with uh, 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 Wednesday player last season, raising his fists uh, to uh, Mr. Reader when he uh, bumped into him, and uh, uh, a few little uh, gestures to the Wednesday fans uh, away there at Huddersfield last year, I don't believe. Yeah. I- to be honest with you, um, Lee Clark is what he is. He's it, it, one of these managers. If he's your manager, um, you tend to like that side of him. We like that about uh, Gary Megson. You like the fact that he, he, he gets so involved in it. But I understand what you're saying. There is a difference between kissing the badge to the Sheffield United <laughs> fans and sticking your fingers up to the away fans. Look, as far as I could see, that incident with Raider... Raider just tried to tackle him. <laughs> but there is a, a bit, I mean, I, I did tweet this photo at the time, and uh, he's got Raider on the floor with his fist up, uh, looking like he's going to, uh, looking like he's going to knock him out. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm all for a bit of banter up football, of course I am. And uh, but when it starts to get like that, beastie, no need, no need. Yeah, I I agree with you, um, but um, Lee, like as I said, Lee Clark is what he is. Um, and he is an absolute <laughs> 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 anyway uh, sorry BC yes so uh, I do apologise um, uh, did I uh, stop your flow about Lee Clark or would you like to carry on with the game <laughs> there's, there's not a lot else to say about him really is apart it? from his <laughs> <laughs> You're obsessed with him being a. <laughs> <laughs> let it go, Lord H. Let ah, it go. Into the nose. <laughs> Harness the good. Block out the bad. Lee <laughs> Clark, I will have my revenge one day. Uh, so, on we go. Uh, and it has to be said, uh, we've got a new chap uh, running around the pitch for this game, BC. Mr. Rodri. Oh. It uh, rather a surprise. Uh, I mean, there was uh, little rumbles about him coming. Uh, there's, uh, but uh, I mean, who'd have thought? I mean, yes, Barcelona B, but who'd have thought that Wednesday be doing business with Barca? Yeah, you, you can't believe it, can you? Uh, not too long ago, we were looking at being closed down for good, and now <laughs> we're buying, <laughs> well, getting players from Barcelona with the option to buy. Uh, exactly. How, how good is that? We've got the option to buy him. Oh, well, if you, ask, if you ask every Wednesday fan based on what they saw last night, they'll say, just buy him. Buy him. Just buy him now. Mr. Milan, put your hand in your pocket. I mean, as to be said, uh, he did come from, from Seville. Uh, Barca did pay uh, 1.5 million euros for the chap, uh, a fair old chunk of change for uh, uh, a young lad as he were, uh, but the buyback cost 10 million euros, basically. Yeah, well, I can understand why. The potential um, is there. You can see the potential in him. Um, it, it's just like a breath of fresh air. All the, oh, I mean, there were virtually 25,000 Wednesday fans there last night, and every one of them was excited to see him. Um, when I was stuck in that traffic outside the ground and it came on the radio, the, the team news, the first news that, that we're happy about was that Beavers was in instead of Gardner. Yep. But as soon as they mentioned that Rodri was starting, you already felt excited, and that, that's what it was like in the ground. Every time he made a run, every time he got the ball, you could feel the surge in the crowd. It was absolutely fantastic. Every now and again, you catch this um, glimpse in the corner of your eye of something moving, and it was him absolutely. anticipating the ball. Um, and that's what we've missed. We, we've not had anybody for a while who anticipates a forward move. They're looking for the ball going forward, and he never stops. And this, um, the one thing that we've lacked, um, I, I've enjoyed watching a lot of our strikers uh, in recent times, yeah. but one thing we've lacked is pace, and this lad has got loads of it. Coming out of his ears, I mean, even with his very first touch, almost scored. 
uh, a nice little uh, crossing uh, from the from the left hand side. Uh, I must admit, just before uh, it did take this shot, um, if you do watch uh, c- c- carefully on on the replay there, um, it, it does seem to give the defender a little nudge. The defender falls down, leaves him all on his own, and uh, just with his very first touch for the Wednesday, just just wide. Uh, I must admit, you see, it did give me a little bit of a oh, is this why Barca have let him come? Um, and, 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 yeah, but you, I mean, you've got to, you've got to bear in mind this is a very young lad. Uh, he's coming over to a, another country. He speaks no English whatsoever. So the only person he can communicate is Lara, <laughs> right? So we, we've no idea what Lara's saying to him. He might be telling them all that we're all meatheads, right? <laughs> you never know, you never yeah, know, boy. We have absolutely no idea. Um, so uh, basically, we can blame Lara. He might have told him to miss. <laughs> uh, but his nerves are, are, are sure to have played a big part in that. Absolutely, um, absolutely. But let's be right here. He made up for that um, that one little mistake because everything he did afterwards was just magic. And it was. I can't. I can't speak highly enough of him because it was such um, a buzz in the whole of Hillsborough. Uh, everybody was so taken with him. Um, and when he eventually did score, the place just lifted. It was such a roar. And, uh, and, and then when we started singing his name, oh. all three sides, virtually 25,000 people, all singing his name. And a very fitting song it is too. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, back, back to the goal, Beastie. Um, again, don't get me wrong, I'm happy the lad scored. He does look like a prospect. I'm not trying to uh, to, to uh, take the sheen off in any way. Uh, but it did look like another goalkeeping mistake to me, Beastie. I think the keeper should have had it. Yeah, it did It did look like a bit of a goalkeeping uh, error. Yeah, you're right. But again, you're talking about a very young player with their, keep, their keeper. I don't want to... Um, I don't want to you know, soften the blow too much because we were playing against him, but he is a young keeper and a lot of people are saying that he is a very good keeper and he will be a good keeper in the future. But you look at you look at that whole goal there. Uh, people slate Raider for his passing ability, but he intercepted that pass. Yep, absolutely. He, brought, he strode forward with confidence and he put that pass in round the back of their defence perfectly weighted for Rodri to run onto. Uh, don't get me wrong, there was a lot of work to do. But people knock uh, Raider for a lot of things and they're knocking for his passing. That was a perfect pass. And Rodri just took his time. He took his time. And, all right, he might have been a little bit lucky with a, with a goalkeeper error. But he enjoyed it. And that celebration was fantastic. Oh, it's lovely to see. I mean, uh, Mr. Carboni-esque, uh, a little bit of a back... I do love a backflip, Beastie. I do love a backflip. Uh, you definitely wouldn't get to, uh, uh, Tubby Apperton up there uh, <laughs> doing the backflip, <laughs> would you, old boy? Uh, but, no, absolutely. So, uh, watch this space. Uh, now, uh, the Birmingham goal, uh, the first Birmingham goal. Uh, again, Beastie, uh, it's coming through the defence. It's a rate of knots. Uh, I must say, again, like you did uh, say earlier, uh, Beavers, um, I mean, I seem to be mopping everything up back there. Uh, I'm very happy to see him in there. Uh, I do think he'll get his chance this season. And uh, judging by so far, I mean, Mr. Gardner wasn't even on the bench there. Uh, do we think he's, he's picked up a bit of an injury there, BC? Uh, I'm not too sure. I mean, I've not heard anything. I, I assumed he went off at Derby because of an injury. Um, but it can, it can only be good that he's being replaced by Beavers at the moment for me. Um, and he made a big difference. It yeah, nice absolutely. to see him back there. And he had a very good game, did Beavers. Yeah, um, so seems to be getting on well with the error as well. Yeah, it, it does. And uh, a good young and a good old and is always a good combination for me. Um, and I, I, I can't think of many mistakes that Beavers made, maybe one or two, uh, throughout the whole 90 minutes. Um, which, to me... You can you can stand that as long as it don't cost you a goal. Absolutely, absolutely. But no, I've, uh, like I said, I'm absolutely uh, uh, happy to see him back. Happy to see him back. I do hope Garden comes good, uh, but uh, happy to see Beavers there. Uh, right. Uh, well, I was saying uh, the uh, the Birmingham did come uh, another cross that seemed to, to to come right through the defence, and uh, of course, uh, chap there to knock it in. Not a great deal that Kirtland could do about that one. Uh, but again, back to Kirtland. My word, Beastie, I had a belting game. He did have a belting game, and again, he pulled off some fantastic saves. In that second half, um, Marlon King uh, got through, and I, I'm sure he's wondering how he, he didn't score. Now, don't get me wrong, any time that Marlon King uh, doesn't score is good for me, because <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, he shouldn't be there. He's a... Um, <laughs> it, it, it's just, to 
me. I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't want to go on a massive rant about Marlon King, but he is a convict and he wears a convict hat. <laughs> I've got. <laughs> I've got. I've got to tell you. Lawyers are going to be very, very busy. This well, week. Uh, I've got to tell you. Um, a few years ago, when they were playing for Watford, um, I think this was uh, before one of his many visits to uh, Her Majesty's <laughs> um, establishment. Um, my friend Aylesbury Owl, who uncannily lives in Aylesbury, <laughs> um, gave him some stick all the way through the game at Watford, um, and was calling him every name <laughs> beginning with every letter of the alphabet, basically. <laughs> And he didn't stop for 60-odd minutes until he was substituted. And it included the lovely song, Marlon King's a convict, he wears a convict's hat, and which I absolutely loved. And I joined in with him. I, I joined in with the little song, um, He's been driving in my car. Beep, 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 beep. And uh, Marlon really, really took offence at this. And uh, Pete, uh, Pete Aylesbury I must have really got to him because as he walked off and he was substitute, substituted, he flicked the rods at my friend, <laughs> which sort of made uh, the entire game worth it, really. I think I lost, like, in the end. Uh, <laughs> but that made it all worth it. Oh, love it, absolutely love but, it. Uh, anyway, last night, um, he, he was through uh, pretty much one-on-one with Kirkland, um, and Kirkland kept him out. It was a, a, a fantastic save, and, and once again, that's three games where he has pulled off absolutely stunning saves, like I said earlier, at key moments. And Wednesday fans, you need to get on board with Kirkland because if he stays fit, he is a fantastic signing, an absolutely fantastic signing. And I speak as one who absolutely loves Bywater. Kirkland is better. Uh, um, like I say, I tend to agree with the Beastie. Uh, again, I'm a huge fan of Mr. Bywater, uh, but uh, it is showing that way. Uh, although uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jones, uh, in, a, in a post-match interview, uh, comes along. Uh, interviewer says, "So Kirtland had a really good game. What do you think, uh, Mr. Jones? A couple of good saves there." Uh, Mr. Jones says, "Oh, that's what he's there for." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Dave Jones for you, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it, it it gives you a straight answer. It, it, if you ask a stupid question like that, <laughs> right, you're going to get a, an answer that's a slap in face. But that's what Dave Jones does. Uh, if you say, well, you, your goalkeeper pulled up a great save, what do you want him to do? That's what he's there for. <laughs> loved it. Absolutely loved it. it. It's a bit like going through a turnstile and saying, your ticket operator sold me a fantastic ticket. <laughs> well, thanks for that. But that, that's his job. Uh, I don't believe it was you who made the point also, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Jones says about, well, well, he's, he's 38 years old. Why would we want him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. It, it's, every time you hear Dave Jones talk, he doesn't, he's not a, a gushing manager. He doesn't uh, over-enthuse about anything. So if he does get quite enthusiastic about something, you know something good has happened. Absolutely. Most of the time, he just talks sense and he keeps things down to earth and we should embrace that. We should embrace it. Every single one of us. I love him. I love him. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely marvellous. Uh, so, it, as we said, uh, uh, Birmingham did start to play decent football. They started fighting a bit longer. I don't know what Mr. Clee- Lee Clark did to them in uh, in the dressing room at half time. Whether it was waving his fist about or what. I wouldn't like to speculate, of course. Uh, but they'd come out and it looked a bit of a different team there, basically. Yeah, they were, they were a, a, a much better side in the second half. Um, they got the goal, and, and to be fair to them, um, they probably just deserved that goal on the second half play. Um, they, were, they, were, they upped the tempo a little bit, and they started to bring the fight to us. And it, it made you think, right, let's see what Wednesday are made of now, because um, we've come back from two goals down twice. Let's see if we can hang on to this. Um, and to be fair, we did, and we, and we started to frustrate them. And after a while... They started to lump it, and um, the Wednesday fans were shouting, Hoof! Hoof! because <laughs> as, the, as the game wore on, they started running out of ideas, and that's all that would open to them. But uh, it does seem that somebody popped up, uh, a very special magic man popped up, with a bit of uh, almost magic of his own, a brand new idea from Mr. Smedo, basically. Yeah, everybody was shocked. Um, he, p- he picked the ball up on South Sand side um, and in towards Cop, and he danced it. Um, <laughs> it. It felt like he'd gone through about 30-odd defenders. Um, 
but thinking back, it probably only about three or four. But it, <laughs> it, it was like um, he would have winged it. It was like he was trying to be JJ or somebody oh. dancing around, and he snaked his way in and in in and out of them all. And then he, for some reason, he thinks that he can go and score and curl <laughs> a ball in that back post. Who does he think he is? Well, obviously, it went the JJ way and went the wrong side of the post. Oh, but it was just a lovely bit of skill and. The whole of the crowd just went. They <gasps> <laughs> were like, "This is your game, Semido. This is your game." <laughs> loved it, absolutely loved it, old boy. Semido up there, uh, bopping into the shorts, fantastic. Uh, but of course, uh, the uh, bit of magic did come eventually from, uh, of course, man of the moment, JJ. Uh, and a belting little run through, of course, using that uh, that famous JJ speed on there. Uh, but he comes up, and of course, we expect the foot straight through, and away it goes. Nice bit of a placement there, Beastie. Running at full pelt, side foot, nicely placed. Uh, are we seeing a different JJ this season? Yeah, he's, he's, he's playing out of his skin at the minute. This is his third game in, uh, on bounce now that he's, he's been arguably one of the best players on pitch. Yeah. Uh, He's it's full of confidence, and every Wednesday fan knows that when JJ's full of confidence, that's when he's playing at his best. And whatever DJ's um, is saying to him, he is he's taking it on board, and he is a, he's starting to think about things now. He's not just getting his... Don't get me wrong, you're getting the odd mistake from him, because that's JJ, but you're now getting him thinking about things and passing things. But this, this goal last night, he deserved that goal. He played so well throughout the game. But it was a good team team goal. Um, we got the ball and we passed it around. Um, it must have been four or five passes before it was flicked on by Pecknick into his path. And he, you know, everybody knows what JJ is like once he starts running. Absolutely. There's not many, there's not many other players can live with him. And he left them uh, Birmingham defenders toiling in his wake. And, of course, as he's bearing down on goal, all the Wednesday fans start to rise, and you go into that little squat. Oh, oh, and as he gets closer, oh, you oh, go up a little oh, bit more. Oh, and then as he gets closer, oh. you're off, everybody's ready to say, I'm looking oh, JJ, yeah. never mind. <laughs> get ball, you know, to car park. But this time, as he got to the edge of the box, he just leathered it straight past him. There were no goalkeeping in area. He just couldn't get anywhere near it. Exactly. And it was a fantastic goal. And JJ did his own little uh, great celebration where he did this aeroplane. <laughs> uh, playing past the, it right in front of us in, in the, uh, in the top of the north oh, stand and then Laird picked him up and put him over his shoulder <laughs> <laughs> it was great to see it just really what a great moment and the game was pretty much over at that point yeah of course uh, I, it is lovely to see nice JJ back again long may it continue I do hope uh, that he uh, carries on throughout the season uh, watch this space we shall see we don't know what JJ is like uh, of course he did finish uh, with just a little bit of a down a bit of a penalty there Beastie you can't really uh, um, argue with the penalty decision can you uh, well I think I can actually uh, mainly because uh, Marlon King scored from it <laughs> um, and if he scores from it, then I'll argue every single point that there is. <laughs> um, to me, it just looked like three players kept together and there were a bit of bundling about going on. Yeah, and there yeah. seemed to be a little bit of confusion in COP. Um, or maybe it was just me. I, I, I'm permanently confused. <laughs> you are the confusion in the COP. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, uh, it, it, it wasn't really clear at first whether he had actually given the penalty, but obviously he had an... Marlon the convict stepped up to uh, <laughs> sorry ex convict uh, former com- uh, once was a um, convict bad chap the bounder yeah. Marlon yeah. the bounder um, and all the time I'm thinking come on big K come on big K save it save it um, and he didn't but the good thing about it was as soon as the ball hit the back of the net it blew the whistle and the game went over uh, and it was nice to see. Um, the wind taken out of Marlon King's sails with that, <laughs> because it scored, but it meant absolutely nothing. Well, the sails just did take a dive as well from a boat that he'd pinched, so uh, <laughs> fair's fair. <laughs> fair's fair. In my boat. <laughs> 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 so, uh, all together, Beastie, uh, quite happy with the week's performances, uh, of course, at the time of recording, Wednesday, uh, uh, oh, of course, it's early days, um, sitting up there uh, second uh, in the championship, uh, let's hope we're there towards the end of the season, but uh, I'm, I'm, I re- remain optimistic, Beastie, remain optimistic. How can you not be optimistic when um, now we're seeing um, good players coming into the club, we're seeing good young players coming into the club, 
we're seeing good football being played now. And if this is a sign of what the future is, our, the Wednesday future looks so good. And Milan Mandrik and Dave Jones have got to take so much credit for this. Um, they are fashioning a club that we can all be proud of and that the kids can grow with. Uh, the kids watching and the kids on the pitch. It's just a great moment to be a Wednesday fan. Oh, absolutely, BT. It's, it's, it's like the good old days. Uh, uh, we're rising. We're on his way. Uh, it does have to be said, though, BT, of course, the, uh, this resurgence was started by uh, Mr. Megson there. Uh, wh- what do you think? Uh, are we still uh, OK to, uh, um, to, to to sing his praises? Do we think that Megson could have done this for us? Do we think we'd be seeing a much different Wednesday side now if uh, Mr. Megson was in charge? No, I, I'm a big Gary Megson fan. Um, I love him. And he'll always be part of uh, Sheffield Wednesday history and he'll always be part of a lot of Wednesday fans' hearts. But there's no way on earth that um, Gary would have brought about this revolution, how we're seeing it now. Not even with the best will in the world could any Wednesday fan say that he could have created what Dave Jones is creating now. Um, which, which, again, just gives more kudos to Dave Jones. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, he's a straight-talking chap. Uh, and again, while he's doing this, long may continue. Uh, so then, BC, uh, that does seem to be uh, the game's all wrapped up. Uh, now, um, as you did say earlier, Mr. Uh, Rodri over there, um, he's, uh, uh, he doesn't speak a word of English. Of course, Wednesdays are an, an international club with plenty of players in there. And uh, so uh, BC and Mr. Fudge have uh, have got a little piece for uh, the new foreign players there. As Sheffield Wednesday is rapidly becoming a continental melting pot of various nationalities, I believe that we now can help our new signings integrate with the local community. Here is the Wednesday Week Guide to Yorkshire Football Chat. Number one. My, my, sir. That was a hefty challenge. I will be notifying your father so he may reprimand you in the future. You dirty chuffer! I know the father! Number two. Excuse me. Would you be as so kind as to pass me the ball? Get here! Number three. Hey, why not pass the ball to the Portuguese chap who is in close proximity to yourself? You to Jose! Number four. Place the ball in my trajectory and I shall put it into the goal with quite some venom. Put it in there, I'm gonna leather it! Number five. Play down the side of the pitch and I shall run onto it. Sling it out line! Number six. Excuse me, ref. I'm questioning your seeing ability to make that call. Ref, you pacey face chubber! Are they blind? Number seven. It is a tin. Tin tin? Yeah! Oh, I get it! Have it! Have it! Yeah! Go on, I say! Goal. That was the Wednesday Week Guide to Yorkshire. Beastie, absolutely marvellous, uh, thoroughly enjoyable, uh, Mr. Fudge and Beastie there, uh, the uh, Yorkshire phrases for our, uh, our brand new imports, uh, <laughs> absolutely wonderful Beastie, what do you think, we're going to see uh, uh, Mr. Rodri run up and down the wing, uh, screaming Yorkshire at folk? Well, how, how can he not do, he's a young, <laughs> fertile, active mind, his mind at the moment, because he's such a young lad, he's like a sponge, he's going to absorb all that information, he's going to take it on, and it's like last night um, at the game. He did such a wonderful thing. Um, he's obviously been brought up proper uh, because before he went off and the 25,000 Wednesday fans singing his praises, <laughs> idolising him, worshipping him uh, and singing his praises through the roof and the little lad just stops in his tracks, walks back, goes over and shakes the hand of the referee. Oh, marvellous. It, it just shows so much class so much respect that he's been brought up properly but i'm telling you now once he's taken all this yorkshire stuff on my, on board <laughs> he'll be over to the referee and he'll be calling him a pasty face chuffer <laughs> especially after he booked him i do believe it was a book last night didn't <laughs> yeah, <he did. laughs> love it absolutely love it and of course uh, uh, mr rodri there was a, a picture out there of him on the pitch with his father so uh, uh, next time he does do a bad challenge, we can all run to his father and tell him that he's not been brought up properly at all. <laughs> love it. Absolutely. We can actually say to him, "I know the father." <laughs> 
Oh, dear. Marvellous. But, yes, basically, um, of course, Mr. Fudge, Mr. Fudge, Mr. Fudge uh, again, I do apologise Mr. F- F- for Mr. Fudge not being here. He's at work. And uh, Edward is away. Sorry, Eddie. I apologise, Edward. Uh, is away on holiday. Uh, we are trying desperately to get us all together so we can do a, a, a full-blown Wednesday week. Of course, we do appreciate uh, the chaps that have been on as well. Uh, but, uh, yes, we are trying our very, very damnedest. Uh, it does seem beastly that there's only me and you that doesn't have anything better to do. Yeah, we need to get a life, really, don't we? <laughs> I certainly do, oh boy. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, on we go. And, uh, um, oh, Beastie, it's been missing from the first one. We was absolutely, there was nothing there for our very first podcast back. But here it is. I introduce to you the very first of the season. Pull down your chance. Mr. Petnick. What we need is a fantastic, gigantic, pedantic winner. Wonder. Watch him hover, hover. Mmm. Watch him make another. Oh. Watch him hover, hover. Mmm. Watch him build another. They call him Mr. Pet. He fantastic. Put him at the tackle, watch the fella go. Oh, fancy. Goes like Atlantic. Put him in the tackle and watch the fella go. Was smooth, just like a seal. Part of the Wednesday, Dave Jones rebuild. He run right through ya, yeah, like you should still. He play on a Saturday, a midweek as well. Oh me, oh my, well, well, can't you tell? He's just like the ball, be under his spell. Boy, you captivate me, you ring my bell. Give the opposition nothing but hell. He runs so fast, like he has a propeller. With a touch so soft, the water breaking eggshell. A pet, he be fantastic. In the back and watch the fella go Oh, frantic He be fantastic For the man attack and watch the fella go So there it is, Beastie. The very first uh, pull down your chance this season. Uh, 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 Mr. Pecknick's number. Uh, welcome him into the club. I, I'm sure he'll have uh, more chance of understanding that than uh, the Yorkshire dialect. Uh, what, what do you think, Beastie? Uh, are, we, are we keeping this one? I just, I didn't know you had that side to you. <laughs> I really didn't know that you had such a deep, mm, Mr. Lover Lover <laughs> voice to you. Now, are you sure that wasn't Jeeves? That was you singing that, wasn't it? <laughs> I did, I must admit, I must admit, uh, I did uh, uh, phone up uh, a, a cousin of mine uh, to uh, instruct me on the finer art of uh, uh, sugar music, uh, and uh, I do say it myself, it wasn't perfect, not by a long shot, but uh, it wasn't a bad little effort for Mr. Penick. Like I say, I'm sure if he did ever hear it, he'd be extraordinarily confused, uh, but uh, <laughs> and I'm certain that we're not, definitely not going to hear well, that one on the terraces. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got to tell you now that um, the Wednesday fans have trouble keeping time to Hey Jude, so there's absolutely no chance that they're going to be singing that. The timing would be all to cock. It would be an absolute nightmare. There would be people bombing when they should be basking, and it would just be, it'd be pandemonium. But I've, got to, I've got to be honest with you, I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, so I shall send the music off to the Wednesday band. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be hearing that one on the terraces uh, very, very soon. Uh, so BC, on we go. Uh, clash against uh, Millwall uh, on on Saturday. Um, it looks like it might be an interesting one. Of course, Millwall uh, uh, known for a bit of a strong arm at times. Uh, having an interesting start to the season. Um, uh, of course, he uh, drew with uh, Crawley. Uh, ended up losing in penalties. Uh, the first game of the season, the uh, actual league game of the season, uh, a two 0 loss to Blackpool, and then um, uh, won against Peterborough over there. Uh, so uh, Beastie. Uh, w- 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 think difficult game well it, you don't want to really say that any game's uh, an easy game do you in championship well, of course not no but, I but most people are going to be looking at Millwall as one of the teams that's going to be finishing down the bottom so we've got to be looking at uh, beating them and all right the one away from home uh, in the last game but it went against Peterborough and again Peterborough are going to be one of them sides that you're thinking are going to be near the bottom as well so I'm not reading too much into that win um, and I'm thinking how we're playing at the moment, this has got to be a home win for us. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because something I mentioned uh, at the game the other night is um, 
once the word gets spread around how Wednesday are playing, not ju- they can, everybody can see the results. They can look at look in the paper. They can look on uh, teletext if people still do that. They can look on Sky. <laughs> right? um, they can see the results. What they can't see is how we're playing, and that's from word of mouth. People will tell them, they'll hear it on the radio, and once they hear that we're playing good football to get these results, they're going to want to come. So on Saturday against Millwall, I'm expecting quite a big home crowd, and I'm hoping that they are in for a treat and a bit of a goal fest. Now that's also a point. Uh, I mean, looking at the Wednesday team, uh, back four, do you think uh, Beavers has won his place back now? Do you think he'll be there on Saturday, BC? Yeah, I'll be very disappointed if Beavers isn't in the side. Um, and and to, be on, to be honest with you, Lord H, I'll be very disappointed if he changes that team uh, that started uh, against Birmingham uh, last night because there's absolutely no reason to change it. Um, we played well. We played well against one of the better sides. This isn't going to be one of the better sides. And... I think we'll do the business. Yeah, the, my only point would be uh, uh, maybe a little switch around the strikers again. Um, again, like you say, Medine does need to find his uh, his, his mojo. Uh, do you think, uh, like you say, with this not being uh, one of the better sides, uh, do you think you might uh, see a bit of a start for Mr. Medine? Or, um, uh, what, what do you think there, old boy? No, I, I, again, I wouldn't start Medine. Um, he's, not, he's certainly not sharp enough at the minute to do uh, 90 minutes. Get Cog on. I think at the moment, the way Cog's playing, uh, he's full of confidence and he's the perfect foil for uh, Rodri. He's a big, strong lad. He holds the ball up uh, and that's going to be a benefit for Rodri, who was just pure pace. Absolutely, old boy. Could not agree more. I uh, tend to agree with the, the majority of things that you do say. <laughs> Makes for a very boring podcast. Uh, so, uh, basically, now, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, give me a score. I'm absolutely confident on this. I'm going to go for 3-1. 3-1. Three, one. Three, one. In fact, no, I'm changing that. 3 nil. 3 nil. Oh, beastie. Absolutely. Well, to tell you the truth, oh boy, I, I, I'm going to say 2 nil. Uh, I do believe the, the, uh, the, the Wednesday defence uh, with Beavers in there. I drew a clean sheet. Um, and then, of course, Caitlin's playing out of his skin. Uh, so, yeah, 2 nil. clean sheet from me. Well, I think they're going to struggle to score goals against us. Plus, I think we've got some unfinished business against one of their strikers, um, especially Lewis Buxton. If you think back to that uh, game at the lane where they were 3-0 up and we pulled it back to 3-2. Ah, uh, of course, old boy. Lewis Buxton had a little bit of a tussle with uh, Henderson, didn't he? Yes, uh, they certainly on his did. Face, uh, when he scored. Um, and I think... There's a little bit of payback for him. Uh, I'm not a big fan of him. Don't get me wrong, I don't dislike him as much as uh, Marlon the Combi, <laughs> but he's not far behind him. Um, not, not that he's done anything wrong, not that he's done, ever done anything illegal, it's just that I don't like him. <laughs> fair enough, oh boy, fair uh, enough. Um, and I think our defence has certainly got some unfinished business with him, so if we can keep him out, the Wednesday crowd get on his back, boo him at every opportunity, <laughs> I know our young and certainly will. <laughs> Uh, that'll make the day even more pleasurable. Absolutely. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting game, and uh, uh, we shall soon find out. Uh, so, Beastie, that brings us to the end of uh, uh, the uh, Wednesday week podcast this week. Uh, of course, we'd like to thank Mr. Pudge uh, over there uh, for, for joining. He is absolutely gutted that he can't be here, and uh, we, we are we're desperately trying to get us all together at the same time. Uh, Edward, of course, as well, uh, although uh, it does seem like Edward hasn't been joining us, uh, we have been in touch, and uh, it is uh, Eddie over there that does uh, uh, put all this up on iTunes and everything like that the man behind the scenes so to speak so uh, again thanks very much Eddie, over there if you don't want to get all those chaps uh, Fudge you can get at at Fudge and Dave over there at uh, Twitter and of course uh, Eddie's over there as uh, Sausage Arms over there on Twitter as well so uh, please do uh, get in touch with those chaps of course you will see Eddie tweeting on the uh, the uh, Wednesday night page over there as well uh, BC where can people get over you old boy Oh, I'm all over the place. Um, you can catch me on Twitter, at Beastie underscore. You can catch me um, on Facebook, on the Owls Alive Facebook page. And, of course, you can catch me uh, on the Owls Alive website at owlsalive.com. And I'm going to assume uh, that uh, now the season is back, the Ramble is back as well, Beastie. Yeah, uh, the Ramble is back. Um, if you check out on uh, owlsalive.com, there's Rambles there for the three games so far. Uh, and of course I'll be doing one for Millwall on Saturday. 
Ah, top chap, top chap, love a ramble, absolutely marvellous. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can get over hold of uh, me on Twitter, uh, at L, uh, uh, sorry, at uh, Lord H, uh, that's L0RD underscore H over there on uh, on Twitter. Uh, of course, you can follow um, the uh, the Wednesday Week podcast on Twitter as well. Uh, do keep an eye on that one for the uh, Beasties Top 10 of the week, or Top 5, depending on how many uh, <laughs> hits we do get over there. It will change every week, so keep an eye out over there, and that's at TWWcast uh, over there on Twitter, at TWWcast. You can email us, of course, uh, at TWWpodcast at uh, gmail.com. And we are over there on Facebook as well. Of course, you can catch up with the show over there on Facebook and, uh, and in all the usual places as well. And do keep an eye on our YouTube channel. If you didn't understand a word that was coming out of my um, rather shaggy like mouth uh, for the uh, for the Penix song, uh, pop over there to, uh, to YouTube. All the songs are up there. Uh, they've all got their own little section over there. And all the lyrics are on the screen, so you can follow along and uh, see my wordsmithing uh, so BC thank you very much for joining me this evening old boy it's been an absolute pleasure as always yeah ditto it's always a pleasure doing the podcast yeah, absolutely old boy and uh, ladies and gentlemen please do get in touch uh, join in the fun oh just bear with me one second and Fudgy's here uh, Fudgy just joined us for the uh, last uh, little second of the show uh, anything you'd like to add old boy I'm gay for Rodri <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Uh, so, uh, thank you very much, Fudge, uh, and uh, goodbye, Fudge. Well, see you later. <laughs> and it's a uh, very good evening for us, and uh, we shall see you very, very soon. All right, yeah. Um, we j- just having a little check, and uh, we've, we've actually left it rolling, um, so you'll be able to hear uh, Fudge and Beastie, and I do believe that Beastie's about to make a, a rather important announcement, so uh, uh, leave it rolling, Jeeves, and, uh, and, and the music will come on very, very soon. Doodle paper. That's right, That's, that was when you went crazy. Uh, I, I, I don't know, mate. I, I, I genuinely still think that no. there are better fullbacks, and it'll be there in the box. So you still clinging to this crazy idea that he can play at midfield. He can. He can no. play. If Samido's not available, I, I don't think I can't think of anybody better than RJ. It's still crazy talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you hire goofballs because that is just <laughs> I have goofballs. Is it nineteen eighty six? Sorry. Uh, let me tell you it's always nineteen eighty six in my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just it's crazy talk. Raider in midfield. The thing that, ho- that, um, that holds that midfield together is the linchpin of uh, Samido. Right? He holds it together. Even when, um, when he hasn't got the ball, even when we ain't got the ball, he's the linchpin in that midfield. He makes, you- he makes the space. Like I said, like I said if, Sam- sorry, if Samido's not available, Lines is, uh, Pechnich is, if, if he's, what is he, an attacking midfielder? Well, counts as strike. to start... Um, Lyons is going to have a trouble getting back in this squad, I'll tell you now, into this team. Do you think? I do, yeah, because Rhys McCabe um, is going to keep him out. I'm all over Rhys McCabe. I am your yeah, Rhys McCabe monster. He's replaced Clinton. 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 Jesus, right? Please. Big news. Let's I'm please. all over. I'm all over him. Um, literally, all over him. He is... Um, He's, he's played two games and he's just been outstanding and he's another one that's just going to get better and better. It's, it's a smashing player. Please, this is the same person who told me back in the last season if anybody comes down from Scotland they'll be playing Mickey Mouse. You were telling me that last year. No, that wasn't me. I think that were uh, Lord H. Oh, oh lies me, baby Jesus Christ. Beast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm sure that won't have been me. I, I think I probably said that... Uh, uh, that but, all players that come from uh, smaller clubs like Rangers are pretty good for us. <laughs> <laughs> He's replaced Clinton. <laughs>